On a 26 degree January morning, I made my way to Shenandoah Junction. The first stop was on the Norfolk Southern H line, where an unknown train was stopped in the siding with all red signals. Judging by the trash containers near the head end, I can confidently say it is either 12 or 14 Z. With I-135 clearing the signal at Reedson, about three miles to the east of Shenandoah Junction, I made my way down to the Cumberland subdivision. About five minutes later, an I-135 was rounding the S-curve. Back down to the H line I went, with no sign of southbound 25A just yet. In another 10 minutes, two Norfolk Southern and one Union Pacific locomotive lead UPS, J.B. Hunt, and many other containers southbound to Atlanta, Georgia. With loaded auto rack train M214 closing in, I quickly raced down to Ridge Road, making it just in time.
once again back down on the H line. The train that started off the day in the siding is finally pulling north. This is Norfolk Southern train 14Z bound for Allentown. Next up is NSK-47 running northbound out of the siding in the process of running around their train. K-47 is the local train that runs between Shenandoah, Virginia and here at Shenandoah Junction. After completing some work to the south in Charlestown, the engineer and his conductor have to run around their train so they can return south. Three hours later, and another train was finally on the way, so I decided to catch it at Bardain. With a piece of track laying on the ballast and rubber strips near the crossing, it appears that the railroad crossing would be getting replaced in the coming week. A few minutes later, M41516 rounds the corner with a long train in tow.
I then heard M217 clearing Harper's Ferry, so I decided to head a couple of miles east in order to catch it climbing up the hill at Duffield. Today's M217 was a long one, about 12,000 feet, taking about 10 minutes to pass at such a slow speed. After the auto racks had passed, I decided to head up to Sharpsburg, Maryland. On January 11th at 9 p.m., NS train 11Z derailed with 26 of its cars coming off of the track. Luckily, no one was injured and no hazmat cars were involved in the derailment. By the time I was able to make my way up here, many of the derail cars had been cleaned up and the track was once again back in service with a 10 mile an hour speed restriction. However, what I was able to capture was a few derailed cars laying alongside the track with an entirely reballasted section of track laying beside it. Unfortunately, with low GPS service, this is as much of the derailment as I could hope to capture, as soon my drone auto-returned to me with lack of GPS. <laughs> 